<laughs> Brandon in Phoenix, how are you? Yeah, hey Matt, how are you? It says here, can I can I mention what the call screener note was? Yeah, go for it. Brandon wants to present evidence of God and guarantees this will be the best show ever if his call is taken this time. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, we're we're in awe, man. Go for it. Well <laughs> I, I cede right. the floor. <laughs> Let me start by uh, just kind of uh, uh, to, to stage things. Let me ask you if, if for example, I had uh, buried $30 million worth of gold, and I approached you with a proposition that if you help me dig up this gold, which I've stamped to prove that it's my gold, it's got my name on it and all of that, and I guaranteed you that you were going to get 30% of the take for helping me uh, dig it up, would you want me to draw up a contract to our agreement? Yes. Now, why would you want me to draw up a contract? Because it has legal protection in the case that you try to screw me on the deal after. So basically, I mean, in short, so that the story doesn't change after we dig up the gold, right? I, I suppose you can phrase it that way, sure. But the real, the real thing is, I'm not as concerned. I, can't come back and, I only told you 5%, not 30%. Sure, yeah, okay, well, that's a version of the story. I'm just saying that I would do it because there's legal protection there to keep me from getting screwed. Right. So, But, I mean, but, but before true. I grab a shovel, you're going to have to actually demonstrate that the gold's real because I'm just going to, you know, but, you know, it, basically I would probably also... Well, that was my also, point is you have no idea if I actually buried anything, so you'd kind of have to take my word on faith. No, 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 because the contract... I actually buried... No, 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 I don't have to take your word on faith for anything because the contract would be written in such a way that if you have 30 million in gold and you're going to give me 30% of it, well, let's just say 10 million to make the math e easier, you got 30 million in gold, if I help you dig it up, uh, I'm going to get 10 million in gold. What's going to happen is you're going to guarantee me payment of $10 million for digging X amount because I'm not just going to keep digging holes with you forever. We're going to, there's going to be a description of what the actual job is and what the payment's going to be and an agreement. It doesn't matter then whether or not you actually have gold because I'm either getting my money or I'm going to take everything you've got suing you afterwards for breach of contract. And now I don't I mean, have to you're, believe you're your story. Smart, you're a smart business guy. And I mean, I would like to state that, uh, you know, intellectually, I think you absolutely dwarf me. If, if well, you and that I doesn't, that doesn't that, matter. I, I mean, think you would you would absolutely have a higher IQ than I do. So, but I, I don't care I about IQ. The one thing I've got on my side is actual wisdom. Okay. being in the truth. And and see, so I would say that I would say that wisdom. Conversation. I would say that wisdom is exactly the sort of thing that would make you design the sort of contract that I'm doing because wisdom. Um, is about lessons learned and having an understanding of reality. That would be wisdom. IQ doesn't matter. You could have, you could have 80 points lower IQ than me, but if you've learned the lesson about how to not get screwed, you can still write the same contract. So it's, I would say that is wisdom. Right. Wouldn't you say it's a wise the contract? The contract is simply that, you know, we put things in writing so that the, that the words can't change. So that's, you know, kind of why, you know, the Old Testament and the New Testament is also referred to as the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Yeah, it's that's curious, kind of it's curious that... The, the why, go ahead. You know, the, the God that I'm trying to prove, why he put everything in writing is so that the story can't change. How do you know God put everything and in they, writing? And why did he need to amend it? Well, as far as, I mean, he, he, the, the purpose of amending it is, I mean, uh, ultimately in the Old Testament, he told the Jews that I bring you a curse this day, that the law is a curse to them. So, and this is also why Jesus said salvation comes through the Jews. He's going to use these people who, you know, went okay. with Moses out of Egypt. I don't, the I don't can we stop the preaching and, yeah, and move, I don't, move I don't to the need, proof of God? Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we complete. So first of all, you're supposed to be presenting proof of God. Um, and second yeah. of all, this notion of we write things down so that it can't change, that's, that's separate. Um, but. Well, I'm going to I'm I'm come back. I'm going to circle back around to that. So, but oh, uh, I guarantee you're, you're going to do a lot of circling because it's already a, you're, you're beginning with essentially a circular argument that we need to rely on the Bible uh, because it is the words that were written down so it couldn't change. And yet the issue is, uh, how do you know that anything in the Bible is true and accurate with respect to what you're going to claim about God? Well, I mean, let me start here as far as, you know, I mean, all uh, over 75% of all scholars and, and historians 
can agree that Jesus of Nazareth was a real person. Well, okay, so first right? first of all, 93% of all statistics are pulled right out of somebody's ass at the time that they need to use them, but the percentage well, of the I'm percentage going, the, 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 per, the percentage of people who believe that Jesus was real is irrelevant to whether or not he was real, and even if everybody believed that Jesus was a real person, that doesn't mean that we have evidence that he was divine or God. I believe there were lots well, of I, real yeah, people. But, but, I agree. I mean, as far as okay. you know, that's not proof yet. That so really every, irrelevant. everything you said is irrelevant to the point of demonstrating that God exists. That's my point. Okay, well, I mean, and, and we do know that he was he was crucified. Well, we know that the, that the Bible claims that he was crucified. It's not that we have any evidence of a crucifixion outside of the Bible. Well, we don't even have any evidence. Modern we, scholars we all don't, agree. We, that, you know, we I don't. We oh, have Brandon, Brandon, he was Brandon. Oh, my crucified. God. No, we don't. No, we don't. And modern scholars don't actually agree on that. What they agree is there are stories about this. The truth is we have no contemporary accounts of any event from Jesus's life at all, which is why there are some people who think this is entirely a myth. I'm not making that argument. But if you're just going to come on here and say, oh, 75 percent of scholars agreed that he was a person and all, most modern scholars agree that he was crucified. Um, None of that matters, because I'll, let me let me just concede for the for the sake of this argument, Brandon, let's just assume I believe Jesus existed and was crucified. OK, then, I, I, I you, don't actually I mean, believe that's the case. Your debate that you, you, you uh, did between uh, Bart please. Ehrman and Bob Price. So, I mean, I wasn't Bart involved Ehrman, in that. I, I, mean, I mean, I said they had the debate. I'm saying for the purposes of right. this discussion right here, let's just pretend that I believe that Jesus existed and that he was crucified. Neither of those and, and, and things, we, neither, neither of those have any relevance, any bearing on whether or not there's a God. Well, I mean, you know, but he claimed that he was God and that's why he was so crucified. What? <laughs> it, okay. okay, I agree. Where, I mean, where, it's Brandon, so it's Brandon, claim, but Brandon, they, were there other people who were killed for, for heresy? Were there other people who went around claiming they were sure. gone? Okay, so sure. were those people God? No. Okay, so isn't that, doesn't that mean this is irrelevant, that somebody claimed they were God and were killed for it? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm getting to that because, see, I mean, God did something very... You, you've got to get to it a lot better than, than just starting... You've got to get to this a lot better than just starting with a parade of things that are irrelevant. What is the proof, Okay. Per, the evidence that the God exists? That he did, the, the proof that he provided us to prove his claim that he was God is, number one, prophecy in the Bible. And then number two is the fact that, you know, I mean, the, the works that he did, the miracles that he did that convinced all of these other people that, I mean, this is, you know, not a normal person can't do these things. A normal I, person I agree. just I agree. Dead. I agree. Now, please demonstrate that he actually did any of the things that are reported. Well, I mean, if you, uh, you know, for I'm just going to give you the elevator version. Why don't you give us the, the best one? Why don't you give us evidence? Coming. Because it says here that you're going to present evidence, and you presented nothing yeah. but claims. So present evidence. Do you even know what evidence is? Yeah, um, let me get there as far as, uh, you know, we do know, the scholars all agree that the book Jesus of Daniel Christ. was written between 603 and 606 B.C. That's when that book was written. And in this... It was given the prophecy that, that the Messiah, Jesus, was going to come uh, and, and enter into the streets of Jerusalem. That's false. In exactly that's false. 600 or that's 483 false. That's, years. Brandon, that's false. It doesn't say Jesus in Daniel. Uh, well, it says the Messiah. Okay, but you said the Messiah, Jesus. You, you are well, dishonestly true. injecting Jesus into a potential prophecy here because you've already concluded that he does this. But if a book says our future Messiah will do this. Does that mean that later on, if somebody does that, that they are in fact the Messiah? Well, I mean, as far as I mean, it's pretty accurate as far- No, that's not what I'm asking. Daniel. I'm not asking, so here's a statement. Somebody makes a statement about a future event. If later on that future event comes true, what does that tell us about the prophecy? That the that the prophet uh, prophet was absolutely true in what he was saying. It tells us it tells us that they said something which came true. But does that mean that the prophet actually predicted this? Did they knowingly set up a scenario that they knew was going to happen? Well, I mean, in the book of Daniel, the the angel Gabriel came to Daniel and said, "In 483 years, 
the Messiah is going to walk through the gates of Jerusalem and will be recognized as the Messiah. And then, I mean, and that's exactly uh, 173,880 days. So, so let's and say the day let's, Jesus entered into Jerusalem. So, so let's on say mass, Jesus Christ. Let's say that three days before Jesus entered Jerusalem, assuming that's actually what happened, uh, did somebody have access to the book of Daniel at that time? Absolutely. The Jewish people, they're yeah. historians. That's why God used them. So if I go in to a restaurant and I order a steak medium rare and I get a steak that's medium rare, have I made a prediction and the waiter fulfilled prophecy? Well, I mean, that's a prediction. That's something, you know, Pro prophecy, prophecy is a prediction. prediction are two different things. No, they're not. Things that are different. No, they're not. not. The same. They're not the same. Prophecy and prediction are, are, are synonyms. You are saying this is going to happen in the future and then it happens. Absolutely. We're talking many, many years in the future. Though. What, I mean, what difference does that make? The person that made the prediction died before the thing. Ever I'll tell you, happened. I'll tell you exactly what, what difference it makes. It means that there were 683 years for people to actively work towards that goal, knowing it was going to happen. If I say one year from today, somebody is going to give birth to a child and they are going to name it Matt is awesome. And a year to the day from now, somebody actually names their kid Matt is awesome. Was that prophecy being fulfilled? Or was that somebody well, saying, hey. He said I, that, it, that he would be called Emmanuel. They gave him a, the prophecy yeah. gave him Jesus. <laughs> yeah, a not Jesus, right? Not Jesus. <laughs> In the New Testament, he's not referred God to as Emmanuel. Us, it, the meaning it, of Emmanuel is God with us to another way to oh prove goodness. that Jesus is God as he claimed. So that's what, we that's have, what he said. We, is he, he, Jesus that's why Christ. they killed him. We have a number of big problems here. One is that you believe everything in the Bible. Uh, uh, well, let me just say this. As far as I believe that the King James Bible is the only real Bible that fulfilled the prophecy given in Psalm 12. And I'm assuming you're you talking about these. The the, I'm, ta I'm assuming in the trash. I'm assuming you're talking about the 1611 AV version only, right? Correct. The, the standard authorized Cambridge edition Bible. Well, that's the standard authorized Cambridge edition may not be the exact same thing as the 1611 authorized version, is it? Well, I mean, it's, it's, that, well, that's better, the better, real Bible. Get your story saying, straight. Is you can take all the other Bibles and trash them. Sure, even the Bibles that that was based on, that the interpretations came out of, even the Masoretic text and the Septuagint, you can chuck, chuck those in the trash? We'll see. What about the Dead Sea Scrolls? What about the Dead Sea, what about the, what about, what about the Dead Sea Scrolls? You can chuck those in the trash too? Absolutely. Okay. As far as, you know, this is where... Uh, so, know, so Psalms Brandon, 12, we're done. God made Brandon, his, you, Brandon, his you're, Brandon, you're a cartoon, man. Brandon, we're done. <laughs> you have a ridiculous position. You have a ridiculous now, position. A Here, no, 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 I'm not holding on. You're holding on. You're on hold right now. I might bring you back. I might not. In 1611, a new version of the Bible was translated from a number of different texts. And your thing is... We can toss out all those things that it was based on and just go with this one, as if the Lord himself spoke English, as if these people who translated it have even a fraction of the understanding of the ancient languages and the context at the time as modern scholars do. That makes no sense. This is you not just cherry picking from the Bible, but cherry picking the Bible. Well, I, I, I don't mean to, I'm not trying to cherry pick. I understand your point, and it's a good point. I'm just saying that, you know, I mean, obviously, God, if God is God, then he's capable of speaking any language that he wants to. Sure. He's, and, isn't he also so, capable? Isn't he also capable of uh, revealing himself to all of us right now? He has. This is the point. This is where I'm. No, he hasn't. To, God, he has 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 God has never revealed himself to me. I can say that with confidence. Nor me. Well, that's, I mean, he's not going to physically reveal Why not? himself to you. Can, can he not do that? Be, because of our nature versus... Can, can he do nature. that? Can he do it or not? Uh, without destroying you? No. <laughs> then, then how did he reveal himself to anybody else? How did he, uh, how did he w w explain the Damascus Road experience? Isn't that a revelation directly to Saul? Absolutely. And as far as... And that, it didn't destroy him, did it? 
This is, you know, the, did it destroy them? You know, those are chosen vessels and did apostles it, did have it, a specific. Okay, uh, look, oh my God, you're just making all kinds of excuses. I said, can God do this? And you said, not without destroying you. And then I pull up an example where you have to believe, because it's in your book, that God revealed himself to somebody without destroying. And now you come up with a post hoc rationalization that he was a chosen vessel. Can God make me a chosen vessel? Of course, I think he has. Why hasn't he? If you actually. If you actually Wait, were so, well, then we're back no, 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 no. square one. No, 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 no. Why does because, he do it? <laughs> because now you just said that you think God has made me a chosen vessel, but you said that God couldn't reveal himself to destroy without destroying me. And then when I asked what it would take, I would say, why could it happen to Saul? And it, you said, because he was a chosen vessel. So if I'm a chosen vessel, then clearly God can reveal himself to me without destroying me, right? So the answer to my original question was yes, he can. In his, yes, sure, of course. I mean, and yet he yeah, hasn't. You were the young, if you were to be an apostle, which their job is, their function has already been served. It's done. So apostles, apostles have to believe before the revelation. No, I mean, but see. Okay, so the, then apostles so, are different from no, prophets. No, no, Brandon. As far as Brandon, they set down doctrine. Brandon, prophets tell shut you shut up. Events. You're not following this. You've said I'm a vessel, and that God can reveal Himself to me. And then when I say why hasn't He, you say it's because I'm not an apostle. And I'm asking, do you have to be apostle before that you get the revelation? And your answer is no. So it's irrelevant to why I haven't received the revelation yet. Don't you think that if God make, considers me a vessel and reveals himself to me, that perhaps I might become an apostle? Well, uh, no, because I mean, the, the apostleship is already done. There won't be any so, more apostles. So then God can't reveal himself to me because I can't become an apostle, right? Well, no, no, no. He, he has revealed. He's He's no, he hasn't. Here no, he ha right now. See, Brandon. Jesus. Brandon. Sorry. God has not revealed himself to me. Period. Full stop. Well, let me explain how he's done this, except you just don't see it yet. Uh, oh. oh, my God, God Brandon. Brandon. God Brandon. <laughs> Brandon. How can it be possible that something has been revealed to you and yet you don't see it? That The, the process of revelation intrinsically includes the recognition of the observer. That's, this is something different from, hey, there is evidence for something and you just haven't seen it yet, versus I have revealed this evidence to you and you don't see it. Well, I mean, have you ever, you know, like lost your glasses or something and they're just sitting oh. right in front of your... Goodbye. I'm, I'm constantly disappointed about these folks that say, hey, I've got proof of God and they come on and nothing. Have you lost your glasses? <laughs> yep. And you know what found them? Looking for the glasses. When it was revealed to me what their location was, by my eyes and my searching, not by some external spirit, I found my glasses. This, this sort of nonsensical, simplistic, you know, hey, I, I lost my glasses, I prayed for help, and then I found my glasses. Okay, what did the prayer have to do with it? Yeah. Nothing. Well, didn't didn't Jesus uh, prophecy that he'd be uh, you know, returning within a generation? Mm. Not necessarily. He didn't put a time frame on it, but he said there are some standing here uh, who will not taste of death until all these things have come to pass, which can be interpreted that way, and it can be interpreted another way. I'm pretty sure there's a quote where he says within a generation. Well, there, there are things about that within within this generation, but that okay it's all subject to interpretation it's a big mess okay. uh, but it's a big mess but at the end of the day this notion of prophecy i've already done a video on prophecy we already talked about it over and over again um the fact that the book of daniel says something that you look at events later and interpret them as if they fit that um i tell you what instead of calling the atheist experience go call the jewish experience and explain to them why they're wrong to not recognize jesus as the predicted messiah uh because they believe in the prophecy i don't and you think the prophecy has been fulfilled, and they don't. So when the two of you sort out what, what's the actual truth about prophecy, then call back. Yeah. And when you can get atheists and Jews to say, yes, we agree this is prophecy, and it was fulfilled, but we still don't believe in Jesus. Right. Whatever.